Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. And Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, and it is sponsored by EMT Solar and Roofing. See if your home qualifies for a free rope roof with solar installation, no commitments, no hidden fees. Go to ESPNSolar.com to see if you qualify Adam Kaplan from the Inside the Birds podcast, InsideTheBirds.com, the Inside the Birds pre- and post-game show on their social media channels. Adam can tell you more about where you can find them this weekend as they get you ready for Eagles and Commanders. Commander Kaplan, how are you? Hey, man, good to talk to you, Mike. Yeah, so our pre-game show will be live in person if you want to go at Rivers Casino in South Philly. And then we do the post-game show. And that, by the way, that's from um, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We always start around three hours before the game. We always start at the top of the hour. We don't do it like even if there's a game at 4.30, we're going to do it. We're going to start at like 1 Eastern when they play at 4 o'clock. So uh, then we've got within, I'm going to say, Mike, 15 minutes after the game, we'll be on myself, Jeff, and uh, Trey Thomas for the post-game show. The pre-game is me and Mosher. Greg Gosell's back this week. Trey filled in for him. And then it's uh, also Jason Avon is tremendous. And he had some great stuff on Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in, in our, our show last week. He broke down his tape and said, look, he had to be better for this game against Minnesota, and he was. Well, uh, obviously, he'll be a factor this week because you're going to get a team uh, and a guy in Carson Wentz that likes to throw it around. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's take a look at the health of these two teams. The Eagles, very healthy as they enter this uh, this game. Not a lot of guys uh, on the injured list for Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, you take a look at uh, basically it seems like everybody's ready to go, right? Yeah, barring something else to see, Mike, uh, they're all going to be ready to roll. Uh, Washington's got a lot of players that are banged up. Couple will miss. Chase Rullier will not play their starting center. He won an IR. He might not even come back this season. They don't know yet. Uh, Wes Schweitzer should play. Uh, he sh- he could play center or guard. He's played mostly guard in his career. Uh, he is cleared for the game, from what I understand. In fact, he should have played last week, though. From what I understand, we we had we have a really good note on today's show that dropped our, our game preview. But he should play. Uh, Dana Wise is their top backup D tackle. He won't. He's out with a high ankle sprain. Chase Young's done, obviously, for the first four weeks, maybe not, maybe even for the first half of the season with his torn ACL. And that, that clearly has been a problem. Casey Toohill won't play for him. Eagle seventh round pick. He has a concussion. Cam Curl's back uh, with a right thumb injury. He's back. He's really good. Greg Cosell loves him. Uh, so they've got some guys that are banged up. Not, not good when you're going against a healthy team that's probably better than you are. And this is a game where, by the way, Mike, it would not shock me if at least 10,000 Eagle fans are at. Yeah, I know that uh, we're sending some people down there. There's a bus leaving from South Jersey. I know there's some other places sending a lot of people down there. So could be a high contingent of Eagles fans. Uh, I, I, you know, the whole, the way they won that game, and then, of course, the next day it catches fire. Everybody starts talking about Hurts and MVP and Super yeah, Bowls. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the excitement is there. Is there some concern? Is there a, a letdown or a trap feeling here? I mean, you got the Wentz thing. I feel like the Wentz thing hasn't even got a lot of attention this week because of the way they played Monday night. Kind of o- even overtook that. Yeah, well, remember, it's a, sh- it's a short week, so you're, you're always worried about that. Uh, they have to travel, but it's you know it's a very quick trip, two hours by bus. I believe they're, they're changing it up this year, Mike. I think uh, they usually take the train, the Amtrak. But if when I understand they're busing it, so whatever they're going to be there, it's, it's a quick trip uh, on a short week. You know they didn't practice on Wednesday; they had a walkthrough. Uh, they only two days of practice, and they're not they don't go hard at all anyway. Thursdays their the, their most intense practice, if you want to call it that. Thursdays a very short one hour one hour practice, and it's going to be challenging for them. But the good thing is, as you said, Mike, they're very healthy. One of the healthiest teams in the National Football League. Ironically, who do they play next week? Doug Peterson, another revenge game. Doug Peterson's Jaguars, the only team in the National Football League, to not have a not have a player listed on their injury report for two weeks. That's I've never heard that before covering this business for twenty years. That's unheard of. Uh, so they'll they'll play the Jaguars next week in Philly. But for this game, Eagles are healthy, no doubt about it. Uh, now, in terms of the letdown, you know, we talked about this morning on, on our show that dropped at six a.m. Eastern on uh, YouTube and and every uh, podcasting platform. You, we're not going to know. Like, let's say the Eagles lay an egg. They lose 20 to nothing or something, or they lose by more than 10 points. Everyone's going to point, oh, see, they could, they're, they're, they're cocky. They're listening to what people are saying outdoor, outside the building. 
There's no way to know that, quite frankly, because you you know we don't work for the team. We're not in the we're not in the locker room when the when the media's out when they're not allowed. We don't know what the players are saying to each other. But I know from talking to a couple of the veterans over the years, this went on in 2018, a little bit in 2019, where guys started thinking that they were a little bit better than they were. It, it's hard to quantify it, but sometimes when teams have letdowns, it's generally later in the season. It's not like, first of all, Washington's one on one. Their offense has been fantastic. Once has actually played pretty well. He's turned over three times, but has seven passing touchdowns. Their defense has been bad. We're going to get into that in a minute, Mike. That's the problem with Washington. It's nothing to do with their offense. It's the defense. Hey, I do want to get this in there real quick. The Eagles injury report official just came out. Landon Dickerson did not practice, and he is questionable with a foot injury. So, Ooh, that that's is- new. Okay, Mike, that's new. Now, now he was listed. Last week when an illness, then he took him off. That's not good because he was not listed. He was rested. He took he practiced Wednesday and Thursday. He they went for their walkthrough on Thursday, practiced Thursday. But he's got a foot injury. That that worries me. Yep. Um now the fact that he's not out would tell me that it's not a serious injury. Uh that that would that's a little bit concerning. See that that's that's a new injury. I you know, I've looked at these things forever. Yeah. I could tell when it's new. Um, so, well, as I said, this just came out five minutes ago from the Eagles official, the official Friday report just came out. So he is on it. He he did not participate today and he is listed as questionable. So that is definitely something you just mentioned who Opeta would take that spot. Yeah. Opeta Opeta most likely would start. Um, he's learned to play both sides of the line. He was only comfortable with first couple years on, on one side. Now he can do both, but that's not good. Now Jack Driscoll could do it as well. Um, I have to, we'll, we'll have word on Sunday who took the reps in his place on Friday. I don't know yet. Cause I, I was, I was not aware of this. Um, we'll know, we'll find out. So right. that's, that's not good. No, it's not it's good. Definitely a, it's definitely, uh, Dickerson's a key and, and, you know, the Eagles offensive line is their strength. And let's talk about their offense against the commander's defense. And obviously Jalen hurts, uh, and how the, the commander's secondary and linebackers are going to deal with him because it seems like this is an evolving thing. Teams are going to have to figure out what to do with him if he continues to throw the ball like he did in week two. Yeah, Mike, the, what they're doing here is interesting. It, it, they've shown now you can run an RPO-centric offense and still throw the ball a lot. When I mean, They're throwing in the low 30s. That my, my number was 32 times per game for Hertz this season coming in. He's averaging just slightly under that. It, it's probably going to be around that number, thir- low 30s each game. Why? They've one of the best rosters in the National Football League. B, their schedule's really good. C, they're a really good football team. And they've got a good scheme. And Shane Steichen has been terrific calling the plays. And he understands how to use Hurts as a runner and as a passer. He's a, a pure dual-threat quarterback right now. And the, the thing that blows me away is we didn't know this about him. He's a little bit more explosive than he was last year. In fact, Dan Campbell was the guy, the head coach of the Lions, who said on his Monday press conference after the loss that we just could not run with him. Like, when do you hear a head coach kind of intimate that? They couldn't stop him. So you're right, Mike. He's been tremendous. The the protection was outstanding, about as good as it gets against Minnesota. Yes, there were a lot of very easy throws for him to make where the picture was there. He had a great... Great protection, but guess what? These are the throws he was not making last year because he would see them open. He wouldn't throw it. Now he's throwing it, and and, and he's completing it. He was phenomenal. His best game is an eagle, and it's not even close. From pillar to post, from processing to accuracy, and run whatever you want to met whatever metric you want to use. He was phenomenal against the Vikings. Uh, let's go to the running game because uh, this Washington team seven and a half yards per carry they give up. It's one of the worst uh, in in recent memory against that Commanders front seven. Do we think we see a lot of Miles Sanders in this one? Oh yeah, look, he's clearly the guy. Now, now the thing what I find interesting, Mike, is you know we came into the season trying to figure out what in the world is this thing going to look like. Are they going to use two backs again? Like they only did two backs last year when everyone was healthy, not three. But all backs are healthy and they're using three. Now, the good thing is Sanders is getting way more carries than the other guys. That's not – he had 20 touches last week. That's not in question. He's not a guy – he's not a big physical guy. He's somewhere between 212 and 215. He's got good size but not great size. And But the thing that he's learned to do is get the tough yards. Is more decisive and downhill. But he hasn't really changed much. This has been a little bit overrated. The tape shows that he's the same guy. He's just a little bit slightly more decisive and – not taking as many negative runs, but he's still terrific at explosive back. It's Kenny Gainwell's got to be better, Mike. This has been 
sort of disappointing. His hand, t- bad, bad drop that was for an interception. The only turnover the Eagles have had on offense was Hurts. From Hurts to Gainwell, that, the pass was the, – the screen was there. The middle screen was there. He dropped it. You can't do that. And he had a very up and down, more down than up training camp. Uh, Adam Kaplan, football at four. These wide receivers, the first week was all brown. Last week he got – uh, everybody, the tight ends, the wide receivers, they all had some touches last week. Yeah, I was, um, Mike, I was su- not surprised. I just love the way that they called the game last week. I thought it was great. They got Devontae Smith involved early. You want to do that with a young receiver, keep him engaged. Four targets week one, no catches. And he was open. Now, I will say this with Hurts. There were plays that he did not see that he didn't always go to the right guy on, on the Detroit game. He did in this game. He was outstanding. But, yeah, I like the way they were spreading around. Boy, Zach Paschal, he blocks well for the run game. He'll make a tough catch, contested. He's physical. See, it's amazing. If you go back two years ago when they had Rager, Hightower, Fulgham, Watkins, very young, immature room. They've gone, they've gone to what I call a man's room between Brown, Paschal, Devontae Smith is a type A. Watkins has grown up here. It's amazing how they transformed this room. Really is. Uh, they, they've got uh, a couple of different options, and, and even yeah, you mentioned Pascal. He's a veteran guy who can is a sure-handed type of player, much like uh, Jason Avant, who's on the inside the bird team. He's got that vibe to him uh, that he'll make that chain-moving catch. Let's look at the Eagles' offensive line. As we kind of said, if Dickerson's out, but this line against the Commander front seven, can they rely on this offensive line uh, like they normally like to? Yeah, Mike, and they've not gotten good pressure, and they've been awful on the back end. They've given up too many plays. Getting Cam Curl back will certainly help. He also could cover tight ends if needed. He may be on Goddard Sunday. We'll ask Greg Cosell and uh, Vaughn what they think on our pregame show. But I think it, in the end, Mike, the Eagles' offensive line, even if Dickerson can't go, will be fine. They'll, they'll be able to handle it. It just won't be as good without Dickerson. But they'll, they'll be good uh, no matter who starts in his place. If, indeed, he's out, we don't know that yet. We'll see if he's available. But – uh, no, they'll be they'll be able to handle it. it it's it's boy the boy and then boy, you mentioned earlier boy the the uh, watch could not tackle at all. They've not been good against the run, really bad against the pass. The plays there to be made, and I expect Hurts to play well. This is a game on paper. The Eagles clearly have the better roster. I think they're bet. Although I'll, I'll give uh, their coaches credit, particularly Scott Turner's done a phenomenal job. Their offensive coordinator. They again they're they're not having problems scoring. And, and what you're going to see Sunday, Mike is they're going to spread the Eagles out as we transfer to defense. They're going to spread the Eagles out. Eagles are three deep at corner, and we'll see who wins. They're super deep at receiver and tight end, and it's they're a legit five pass to target deep. They're really a good offense. Uh, the commander's offense, uh, Carson Wentz, triggers this whole thing and kind of you know give us a little insight on how they wrap this offense around Wentz and who's had a pretty good start to this year. They've been really good. He's had a couple mistakes, but overall he's played really well. Um. They don't run it well. Antonio Gibson is not a natural running back. He's a former receiver, played running back one year at Memphis. He, he struggled a bit last year. Brian Robinson, unfortunately, you know, I'm sure you know he got shot twice, and thank goodness he's going to be okay. They're probably going to get him back for week five, and they need to get him back because they just don't run it well. Not that you have to run a lot in the National Football League. When you run it, you want to run it well, and they don't run it well. And this has been a real problem for them. And – you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at so, so, some numbers breaks down here for the, the run game. Boy, he was terrible last week. Um, that ha- that helps you when you become one-dimensional. It becomes easier to defend. And that's yet another area where the Eagles run it well. The second-best running offense of the league. One of the best passing offenses in the league. Everything lines up, Mike, for the Eagles to, to win this game. But you, know, you hope that they don't have that letdown. I don't see it like others do. I just don't see that. Yeah, we know that uh, the commanders, by the way, McLaurin has really hurt the Eagles. That's a guy, too, that they got to figure out. Uh, what to do with. Now, they figured out what to do with Jefferson, so we'll see if they implore a similar defense against McLaurin, who I think has almost like 500 yards receiving in the games he's played against them. So that's probably a big matchup to watch there. Uh, Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds, the pregame show on their social media platforms. Inside the Birds podcast dropped this morning. If you want to go a little deeper on the Eagles and Commanders, you can do so on the Inside the Birds podcast. Adam, appreciate it, bud. Thank you.